In today's video, I will be discussing the seven things that I've been doing regularly and I've also been um, working on that's been helping me improve my life every day, every second, every minute, every hour that God has given me. So if you want to also work on yourself, hopefully this video is for you. With that being said, let's hop right into it. Hi, my name is Afi. If this is your first time watching me, I am a fashion consultant. I love helping women improve their personal style. That also helps them promote their social and public image without having to break the bank. And we also improve the inner self as well. I love helping you build your confidence and also walk the godly way, Christ-like way. Be like Esther, Proverbs 31, Ruth, all the whole nine yards. <laughs> Hopefully you love my content and hopefully you love my fashion, vlogs, hair tutorial, the whole nine yard. With that being said, if you are new, make sure you press subscribe, like, comment, you know, the vibes. If you are a returning subscriber, hey sis, how are you doing? Thank you so much for tuning back in. Hopefully this video helps you as well, just as much as it has been helping more. So today's video is basically tips that I've been working on. Um, when they say self, <laughs> it really means self okay self isn't just something that you think of yourself it's also the things that people think of you as far as like your close ones I'm not talking about the internet trolls I'm not talking about your worst enemy you know the bulliness that people you know I'm not talking about that I'm talking about the things that you avoided about yourself that most people have been telling you about yourself and yeah so today is a whole different topic of the things that I've been doing that's been improving me as a person so yeah I have them written down so if you see me looking down mind yours <laughs> but um yeah just this is just to help me not to go off track you know okay so number one thing that I wrote down I'm just gonna read it out loud so I can feedback on what I wrote down is learn how to pray these are the notes that I write down for myself. And I also write thoughts that come in here. Just scribble them. I'm a little poetic justice sometimes. No, I mean. But um, yeah, this is what I wrote about learning how to pray. Sometimes, sometimes I have a hard time with this because it's hard to be consistent when life hits you 100,000 miles per hour and per seconds, or should I say per seconds and then hours. Um, but I've learned the value and the importance of prayer because that's when and where God shows you and teaches you the secret of life. And I say praying is the most important thing to help you grow as a person. It's key. Well, as a Christian, let's just say that. As a Christian, because I'm Christian, I'm targeting Christ-like minded people. But yeah, as a Christian, it's, it's definitely key. A lot of us think that, you know, they can figure out life by themselves. You can't figure out life without God. You cannot figure out life without God. If you ever met someone who think they have life figured out without God, give them a couple years. The book of First Thessalonians, I think it says, pray without ceasing, meaning pray continuously, never stop. Some of us only pray when things get hard. And then when we achieve what we prayed for, or you know, receive what we prayed for, we stop praying during good times. You can't be that person. I've trained myself not to be that person. I have hard times, yes, to stay consistent, but I've learned the importance of prayer and I've learned what prayer can do in my life and what it has done in my life. My life, I've learned that my life cannot function without prayer. I've tried it before and I've failed plenty of times. That's why I always run back to the cross. We aren't made to function without prayer, especially as a Christian. Find time to pray. Find time to talk to God. And it's not just a Sunday thing. You want this to be an everyday thing. Now, I know there are days where you wake up. I'm guilty of this, too. I try to, like, remind myself, don't do that. The first thing we do is grab our phone. And then some people say, the Bible app is on my phone. Well, one thing I'm going to say about that Bible app, yeah, we need to stop that. We need to actually, we need to start grabbing the actual Bible, okay? <laughs> because that's, that's just another way to distract ourselves when... The Bible, 
the Bible needs to be utilized, okay? But um, yeah, it's it's easy for you to distract yourself in the morning and grab your phone and, you know, go straight to social media and try to figure out whose life is being talked about or who's being talked about. You know, it's the social media shenanigans. But I would definitely recommend you to learn how to pray because within the life of prayer, you will unlock the other things in your life that you did not know was locked. Or praying is very much so the ultimate key to life and the devil knows that. That's why he battles these things when it comes to prayer. He knows that it's the key to life. So he tries to battle your, your consistency with building your relationship with God, reading his word, meditating his word, talking to him every day. For me, prayer comes in very different forms. Prayer for me can be when I'm driving down the street, when I'm driving in my car, um, when I'm at work typing my typing on my computer. I work from home, when I'm in my room in my office, I'm typing on my computer, when I'm singing a song. Prayer can mean anything. Prayer can be worship. So I really encourage you to learn how to pray. Jeremiah 33 3 says, Call to me and I will show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. That is God saying, If you seek me, if you call to me, if you are having problems to learn how to pray, and you call to me, you ask me, God, teach me how to pray. Teach me how to stay focused in prayer. Teach me how to work my mind to be still when I'm praying, when I'm seeking your word. God will show you how to pray. God will show you how to utilize this and control this while praying. But I wanted to start off with that because I feel like when you have that going, everything else will fall in place. And yeah, not just praying, but also meditating the Word of God. Because it says the Word of God is like a double-edged sword. When you're just praying and you're not utilizing the Word of God, you're not going to, to break the chain. Yes, the Word of the name of Jesus breaks every chain. But if you have Jesus on one side and you have the word of God on the other side, that is the double-edged sword, if that makes sense. At least for me, that's what cuts everything that I need to be cutting up in my life. So definitely, definitely, definitely um, utilize the word of God a lot and also implement them into your prayer life. How I do that is I've learned how to use my devotional books <laughs> um devotional book because sometimes when you open the bible it's a bit hard to know where to start so devotional books are there for a reason so it's like every day you have something to meditate on and lord behold i've bought so many devotional books on my stand there's a lot of them yeah learn to utilize those and yeah that's how i utilize my bible hopefully i made sense about praying but definitely Learn how to pray and read your Bible day and night. Remember, Joshua one eight says, "Meditate this book of light. Love. Meditate this book of light. Do not let this book of life depart you from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night, so that you will be prosperous and successful in everything you do." So definitely learn these two things. I promise you, whatever it is that you're going through right now, you will overcome it through the Word of God and prayer double edge sore yeah come on somebody yes ma'am my second one is the power of words speak life into your situations this is something that i had to learn throughout my entire walks of negative thoughts and why is this happening to me why is this that that's because you're cursing your own self okay so speak life into your situation. I've learned the power of words. The book of Proverbs have a verse that says your tongue. It's life and death in the power of the tongue. So when you wake up in the morning, try to speak positive. I've been studying this a lot. Um, well, in the past, not now, but I've noticed in the past when I wake up and I'm like, <sighs> let's say if I hit my toe on something or if I stub my nails on something, and I say, God dang it, today's going to be a bad day. I can feel it. It's going to be a bad day. I will walk through that bad day the whole day. But if I hit my nail on something and I look at it, I'm like, ow, God dang, that hurt. But you know what? I'm still going to make it a good day because today will be a good day. 
it's gonna be a good day. Regardless of what life brings me during the day, I will still find a good day out of the day that it's trying to bring, if that makes sense. So you have the power, use this. Well, don't let what's coming out of here dictate your future. Don't let what you are thinking come out. Because once it comes out, it's like a seed being planted. And the more you are speaking negative, the more you are watering that, that is it soil? Seed soil? <laughs> the more the tree is growing, the more it keeps growing. And when it gets bigger, it's hard for you to break it down. And then that's when you start to do the spiritual warfare. When you could have avoided that a long time ago. A lot of things are common sense, but it's not common for everybody. So, yeah. The power of words is very powerful. In today's age, we talk about manifestation. <laughs> manifestation. And we say what you speak is what's going to happen. Well, in a Christian mind, um, in the Christian world, well, you, you have to prophesy over your life. Okay? That's what it is. Prophesy over your life. Speaking, speaking life into your life. Um, of course, we've all dated that one person that just made you look at relationship differently or made you look at men differently and some of us when we go through those bad you know those bad moments in a relationship we start to look at everyone bad and we start to say i would never be happy man ain't sh you know every guy is the same all i want is loyalty why can't i find loyalty I will be single for the rest of my life. When you say those things, those things happen. So please learn the importance of your words. Um, now I've been, I've been working on it a lot. And even with the process of the job that I got now, when I first got interviewed, once I got off that interview or once the interview was done, this is just a short little story. I got interviewed for the job that I am working at now or doing now. The first day of the interview, it was a bad interview in my opinion. It really was. But what the devil tried to get me to do was to speak about that bad experience all day. But ever since I've learned the power of death is in the tongue, I no longer allow what I'm thinking come out of my mouth. The day of that interview after it was over, of course I had, you know, thoughts on this was a bad interview but the thoughts that I was having in here I didn't let them come out so every time those thoughts came out came in here I will cancel them and I will cancel them in the name of Jesus and I will say I got the job in Jesus name by faith I'm hired regardless of how the job interview went I am hired in Jesus name this is my job this is my position I belong in this organization I have the skills and I will be hired in Jesus name you see that see what I mean so utilizing your power of words is very important the Bible has a lot of God says if you read it you will know that God said a lot in the Bible God said Jesus said God said Jesus said and there's a lot of said in the Bible meaning God gave us the power to change our life with the power of the tongue God created us with just words. He created all this with just words. So you also have the power to create your life with words. Okay? So definitely, definitely, definitely utilize your words and speak positive over your life. Even when things are going bad, you, you're going through a moment. Don't crunch back and be like, why is this happening to me? Why is this always happening to me? Cancel that thought sis and say this is happening to me right now but in jesus name i will overcome in jesus name i will find a man that loves me for me in jesus name i will have money in my wallet let me tell you something i've had money in my wallet by my words make it make sense afi i'm gonna make it make sense sis i've had time when i was in college when i was completely broke i was in my car and i was like jesus I can't be 20 some years old and I don't have five dollars in my wallet. I took my wallet and I said, in Jesus name, I will have money in my wallet. I'm no longer going to be broke. And let me tell you something, that following month, I opened up my wallet 
and I'd be having $100 in there. I had $300 in there one time. I had $50 in there one time. Sis, your words are powerful, okay? Your words are powerful. Don't get me start preaching now. All right, now. We don't want that. Mm -mm. Or it's going to be a long one. But yeah, utilize your words. The power of life comes from the tongue. You either choose death when you speak negative, or you can choose life when you speak positive. The power of your words. Number three is 99 problem, but your physique ain't one. Take care of yourself. This year, I've learned that I really did let myself go last year. And a lot of my siblings and my parents did notice that. And I didn't get it at first. I was just like, you know, I'm still pretty, you know, I'm still pretty. I'll put on my makeup, step outside. It don't matter. It does matter. It does matter because when you start neglecting yourself, it shows. Regardless if you wear nice clothes, regardless if you put makeup on, people know you. People know me as a person that, I, that is always in the gym, that's always taking care of myself. So when I started gaining weight, it was like something is wrong. Why did she gain weight? She ain't pregnant. I feel you need to get back on track. That's just my story. And I've learned the value of taking care of myself. Some people say black don't crack. Black does crack. Okay. If you don't take care of black, you will crack. Just because you're a four doesn't mean you can't be a five. You can't be a six. You know, you can't make yourself be a seven. A lot of us just let ourselves go because we feel like, you know, nobody really cares about how we look. You should care about how you look. Some men get intimidated by a woman who have it all together. That's just how it is. Some men get very intimidated by a woman who have it all together. Value yourself first. Don't let anyone else put a price tag on you. You need to put a price tag on yourself first. You're not for sale. You are a Fendi product. You are a Bottega product. You are a Louis Vuitton. You are Dior Dior. Okay? You're not going to be Dior Dior until you put yourself a Dior Dior. That means take care of yourself. If you got to do your nails, do your nails. A lot of, some people think going to the, they have to go to the nail salon to do their nails. Well, sis, Walmart is down the street. There's a whole bunch of nail polish at the dollar store. You can still look put together with a dollar ninety nine nail polish. Paint your nails. I have been doing this now for the past few months. If you know me, if you watch my old videos, you will know that I never had my nails done because I never really valued that part of my life. Like focusing on my focusing on my feminine side wasn't really a priority. For someone who's beautiful, it wasn't really a priority until my mom made me realize something special. You will not find a valuable man or a man that value you until you start valuing, valuing yourself first. Put a price tag on yourself first. So when people look at that price tag, if they don't have the money for that price tag, they keep it moving. Sooner or later, someone's going to have money for that price tag. Does that make sense? <laughs> but all this just to say, take care of yourself. Have the time to take care of you. It doesn't have to be one expensive self-care. Some women feel as if, you know, I can't be an eight, so I'm going to just be a one. Sis, between one and eight, there's other numbers in the middle, okay? You can be a two, you can be a three, you can be a four, you can be a five. You don't have to be just a one. When you start valuing yourself, when you start taking care of yourself, people will start looking at you differently. Put a price tag on it, mama. You only have one body. Your body is a temple of Christ. Mop it, polish it, do what you got to do to make that temple shine. Lately, I've been doing that for myself and baby... Everybody around me is starting to see me differently. I put a price tag on me. You're not just going to buy me with whatever. I need you to have a black card before you purchase me. We don't do debit. We do credit. <laughs> but anyways, take care of you, okay? Take care of you. I promise you, once you start taking care of you, you're going to start seeing the world differently. And people, people are going to start seeing you differently. I promise that. All right, so number four no number four yeah it's savings now this is very important because my parents have been teaching me this 
for a while now and I'm just now starting to see the importance of having a savings and being that woman that has something in their bank account because that also brings value on that just bring you just sets you to a different standard when you have a savings um, you don't have to necessarily take a whole chunk out of your, your check it can be $20 per paycheck it can be $15 every paycheck. It can be $50 every paycheck. It doesn't necessarily have to be like a huge chunk. Have a saving where you don't touch that money and that saving is just for an emergency. Um, some girls look pretty. Some girls can dress. Some girls bring a lot of look, struck and slay to the table, but they are broke in their bank account. Don't be that girl. Always have at least my parents always used to laugh at me when they asked me for something and they're like Afi go go buy bread and I'm like I ain't got no money and they're like how are you a beautiful girl you don't have at least three dollars in your account you can't be that type of person a woman always have at least ten dollars so don't be that person that doesn't have one dollar in their account okay <laughs> but it's really important for you to build to have a savings account Yes, it's okay to splurge from time to time, but also be financially stable. Be that woman that when someone finds you, they know that you don't play about money and you know your way about money, your way around when it comes to money. Uh, some men, when they meet me, they think I'm high maintenance. And then when I start talking about money and talking about how I'm able to afford certain things, it's like a wowzer. Like, how do you do all this? Like, I thought you would be a person that spends a lot of money I'm smart when it comes to money okay don't let the looks fool you don't be that girl that's that has nothing in here when it comes to this you know build a saving start saving if it's five dollars if you're in college start saving if it's two dollars if you don't have a job you just living off of you know here and there it doesn't matter build a saving open up a savings and make sure that savings doesn't connect to your checkings because that can also be a tempting way of, you know, if you don't have it, you can just borrow from your savings and then put it back. It's really smart for you to have a savings account or a bank account that's not connected to your checkings. So when you don't have money, you don't have to borrow from that savings. So definitely do that. Highly recommend you to learn about and learn more about you know how to save just money in general educate yourself on that and I promise you you will better your life if you do that the next one is self-educate learn something new every day so this is what I wrote down it's important to educate yourself it gives you something productive to look towards and work towards okay you can self-educate yourself on a lot of things whether it's reading a good book learning about wealth or even about how to grow your connection with God the list goes on give yourself time to read books not just watch YouTube channels <laughs> um, yeah and reading the Bible is a great way but it's also a great way to educate yourself on what's going on around the world and how to grow in life as well as connecting to your spiritual growth when I say connecting to your spiritual growth I'm talking about books that are that aren't just the Bible there's a lot of ministers out there there's a book by Joyce Meyer that I was reading two years ago it's called breaking bad habits that books that book helps a lot when it comes to breaking bad habits she just teaches you how to you know whatever it is that you're that, that you call your bad habits how to break them <laughs> I can't really explain to you the book says it all breaking bad habits um, learn how to learn new things does that make sense there is a quote by Socrates one of my guys my philosopher Greek philosopher he has a quote by, by <laughs> he has a quote by Socrates there's a quote by Socrates that goes true knowledge is knowing that you know nothing Every day, wake up as if you know nothing because that would give you an opportunity to learn something. Be open-minded. If you want to learn something, walk into that something as if you don't know it. 
I know everything about cameras. I know everything about how to edit. But when someone tells me about editing, I listen to them as if I don't know anything about editing. Because they might end up telling me something that I don't know, that I thought I knew, but I didn't know. So self-educate yourself. It's really important for you to be that, you know, pretty and also, you know, a little some some. If you are one of those girls who are, you're dating a guy that loves sports, learn about sports. This is what gets me. There are some girls who don't really care about their boyfriend's interests. And then you get mad when they connect to someone that have interests in the things that they have interest in. I really do respect my sister-in-law when it comes to this. She didn't watch a she didn't watch a second of football. Now this girl knows a little bit more about football than I do. Because she learned, she she decided to learn, you know, educate herself about the sports educate yourself about basketball just because you don't watch it daily it doesn't mean you don't need to learn about it educate yourself it's really important if you are learning if you want to learn how to cook read cookbooks it's that simple don't be that girl that just focus on their looks and when someone asks them what's two plus two you all know what two plus two is you start using your fingers 21 you stupid. <laughs> Educate yourself on a lot of things. Be curious to learn. Life has new things every day. Don't be that person that knows it all. True knowledge is knowing that you know nothing. Wake up every day wanting to learn something new, whether it's a new word, whether it's something that's happening around the world, something that involves you learning. Okay? Self-educate is key to life. Be brains and beauty not beauties and just beauty all right cool all right so last but not least is finding a hobby okay i know some people will be like Avi, i ain't got time for that i got a lot of things to worry about that's why i watch youtube channels youtube videos to escape from the world this is my hobbies well sis thank you <laughs> But uh, find a hobby. It's important for you to find a hobby. A lot of us tend to focus more on our problems to the fact that we lose the importance of living life and living it to abundantly. That's what John 10.10 10 says. God came to give you life, to live it abundantly. That means enjoy life even through hard times. Find a way to enjoy life. Um, we tend to focus a lot on, on our struggles to a point where like we don't have time for fun and I don't know about you but I've met people who find it very offensive when you are smiling they'd be like why are you smiling there's nothing to smile about you're like because I woke up this morning <laughs> that's why I'm smiling I mean who pissing your cereal but definitely find a hobby because that's how you will also find your purpose a lot of us tend to look for a purpose when your purpose come might come through your hobbies. If you think serving in the church is your hobby, you might find your purpose when serving in the church. Maybe that's your calling when you fix coffee coffee every day and smile at people. If you want to learn how to cook, take a cooking class. Find a hobby and don't focus so much about your problems because the devil comes to still kill and destroy. And one way he does that is he's going to find a place in your life that he sees that you're very focused on. And he will find a way for you to 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 crumble you up to a point where like you feel like you can't take it anymore. And there you go, you take your life away. Everything in life is temporary. I really want you to focus on this and understand that when you find a hobby, it will lead you to your purpose. This was my hobby. This is a way for me to escape sometimes my problems in here and then it became my purpose and now i'm talking to you about christ i'm talking to you about my life i'm teaching you how to dress i'm teaching you how you can you know feng shui <laughs> function in life it be, you know my hobby was my purpose but i didn't know it so find something learn something every day which ties into educate yourself you know but learn something every day Go painting if you have to. Figure out something. Get away from your phone. Okay? 
find a hobby and you'll be surprised on what your hobby can do for you because in life we tend to focus so much on the negative the problems that we don't see the the the, the joy that God gives us every morning we don't see it joy you have to search for joy you have to search for happiness or else you're not going to see happiness you're not going to see joy you're not going to see the abundant the abundantness that God talks about in his word those things are made to be searched you got to search for peace peace is not just going to come to you happiness is not just going to come to you joy is not just going to come to you those are the things that you seek for yourself so build a hobby find a hobby look for things that interest you or try something new if you already know everything try something new don't walk into a room thinking that you know it all because true knowledge is knowing that you know nothing okay all right but yeah that's about it thank you so much for listening watching the whole nine yard i feel like i did a lot of talking if you would like to hear any more of these type of topics make sure you subscribe make sure you follow me on my podcast the after elizabeth podcast and also make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend about this channel right here because we got a lot of good things happening all right thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next one remember only you can change your life nobody else can put that price tag on yourself all right bye